है क्या I've never preached out of this book or ever heard a message out of this book. So this is this is first for me. The Lord started dealing with my heart this week about some stuff and uh just looking at my life and uh looking at my ways, you know. And uh some things that I could work on and uh things I could do better <coughs> as a husband. As a father, as a preacher, leader of this church, um, so many times that we can get complacent and get, you know, just get comfortable. And the uh, Lord just kind of opened my eyes to some things, and I appreciate Him. Uh, and he, he put this on my heart a couple of days ago. And uh, by the way, I got a I got a message this morning. There's a difference between a message and a sermon. And uh, I got a message to deliver to to us. And uh Lord just started giving me things. And uh I like I like it when I like it when it's easy to prepare for sermon. The Lord just pours it on you. And uh you ain't gotta dig and things like that. He gives me messages all different ways. It may be uh something I read, it may be something I hear, it gives me a thought, it may be a an old sermon that I heard, God God just triggers me and that brings it back all sorts of ways. But I just sit there on my couch. It, he, he feeds me in different ways. I just sit there on my couch and, uh, man, I just started writing this stuff down. Uh, but I appreciate him, appreciate him speaking to me. <clears throat> and he wants me to share it with you guys. And uh, if we'll get a hold of this, I believe there's going to be series of these messages, I believe. Um, we may just get through one today, one particular topic today, and uh, I'll be preaching to myself today, and I hope y'all listen and get something out of it. Um, but uh, yeah, the Lord's really, wait, really put put these verses on my heart, and every every verse that I read to you, he, he pressed on my heart to share with you, okay? I'm not up here wasting your time, I'm not up here just filling a spot, Uh here to deliver a message to you, and uh, it was hard for me to to swallow some of this stuff, but uh, y'all ready? Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> the Bible says, "Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts: Consider your ways. You have so much, and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink." You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Verse 7, he repeats himself again. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Y'all want to pray? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this, this morning. Lord, what a privilege it is to, to gather our families out of our homes. Lord, and bring them up to the house of God. Lord, just thank you for a place that we can come and, and enter in and worship you freely and read your Bible freely and teach our children uh, your word freely. Lord, what a privilege sometimes we take for granted. God, I pray that you'll help us today and to consider in our ways, Lord. Uh, there's so many, so many different areas we could consider our ways. Lord, I pray that you'll help us in this thought that you give us this morning. Lord, we just want to say we love you. Thank you for uh, for loving us, and uh, Lord, help us to love our, our 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 families. Lord, like you'd be pleased. Lord, we want to please you. Lord, help us to love our neighbors. Lord, so that you'll be pleased in the way that we love others. God, just help us to uh, be sensitive to your spirit each and every day. Lord, as we go out and we're among others, <coughs> God, we got a job to do. Lord, as long as we're drawing air. Lord, we're still breathing and walking on your ground. God, we got a job to do. Lord, help us today to not consider um, our spouse's ways, not consider our neighbors, not consider the Democrats' ways, not consider the Republican ways. But, Lord, I pray that we'll consider our own ways this morning. Lord, if anything's going to change, it'll change in our, in our own self. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Lord, make preaching easy for me. 
Lord, I pray that you'll make listening easy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give me a shot of this. Y'all be praying for me. I'm going to try to perform my grandpa's service coming up. And I ain't, I'm not really looking forward to that. But I am going to share the gospel there. We're going to do that. <coughs> uh, in Haggai, the Bible says, consider your ways. Man, and the Lord just, just those, those words just jumped out, on the, out of the pages on me. And uh, I mean, they just, just magnified it. Y'all know how the Holy Spirit speaks to you. I mean, they just jumped out, Brother Carl. And, uh, you know, I got to thinking about those three words, consider. You know, the word consider means to give thought, to give attention, okay, to give energy and give time to. It means to ponder. It means to think about. It means to, to analyze, okay, when you're considering something. You're giving some thought to it. You're wanting to get something, okay? You're wanting to understand something. Uh, the word you're there is just simply talking about you. It's not talking about consider, it's not talking about consider your neighbor's ways. It's not talking about consider your spouse's ways. It's not talking about considering your children's ways. It's not talking about considering um, the White House and Democrats and the Republicans. It's talking about considering your ways. And consider my ways. It's, it's, it's talking about asking God to show you, you. We're good at getting the, getting the attention off ourselves when God's wanting something out of our life. And it's easy to point at someone else. And uh, <clears throat> it says, consider your ways. And one of the ways I want to talk about this morning... And uh, I want you to turn to Ephesians, Ephesians this morning, Ephesians chapter 5 and chapter 6, we'll read some there. While you're turning there, this morning I noticed that in these, past, in these, in these verses, I noticed that, I noticed that in verses um, 22 through 23 and verse in chapter 5 and verse 6 uh, all of these and I'm going to read some of them to you but I noticed that the spirit filled wife she submits to her husband I noticed that the spirit filled husband he loves his wife I noticed that in chapter 6 that the spirit filled children they obey their parents um, I noticed that in verse chapter 6 verse 4 that the spirit filled father he doesn't provoke his children to wrath and to anger. Um, I notice how the spirit-filled uh, person submits to others, in a nutshell. Uh, knows how to get under submission, uh, most of all to our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> in Ephesians 5, verses 21 through 33, I notice how the spirit-filled person submits to others. In chapter 6, verses 1 through 9, it talks about people submitting yourself submitting yourself and uh, it talks about over in the latter part of chapter 6 how the spirit filled employee works diligent, diligently for his boss and employer okay submits himself I noticed how the spirit filled boss or the employer is fair with his employees why because he's spirit filled uh, all those are manifestations of the spirit filled life folks these are all manifestations of the Spirit-filled life. I want to read some to you. The Bible says in verse 22, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. <clears throat> Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or having have such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished it and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of the flesh, and of his bones. 
For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and his wife see that she reverence her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it, should may, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Y'all hear that, young people? Yeah. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. It's important words right there, man. Provoke not your children to wrath. Be careful that you're being led by the Spirit. You're not yielding to the flesh, folks. And fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurse and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not unto men. We talked about considering our ways. The Bible said two different places in, uh, in our passage. And I really, want to, I really want you to consider your ways this morning. Uh, this can apply to the whole family, from the child, from the mom, to the wife, to the husband, to the father. You can apply this to all, but I'm going to apply it mostly. I'm going to start out with the, with the man, with the head of the house, okay? I believe that would be fair, man, because God holds us accountable. Uh, this wasn't comfortable, okay? But it's, it's necessary. This, this type of stuff, y'all, if we'll get right, uh, it'll transform our relationship with the Lord. It'll transform, it'll transform the power and the liberty that the Spirit has in the church when families do come together and meet. Uh, man, it's, it's just so important. It'll transform your prayer life if you'll get these things right, uh, these commandments of God. Um, but I want to look at uh, just one way. I have a million ways going through my head of, of ways that we can consider, okay? Ways that we can reflect on. And, uh, but I want to look at this one first of all and foremost. Uh, I want to start with the men this morning in regard to uh, loving their wives. And the devil knew what I was going to be preaching on this morning. And uh, he, he tried to send out an attack on me this morning already. That sorry joker. But... Uh, but I want to start with a man in regard to loving their wives. Uh, but first, I want to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. These are all scriptures that God impressed on my heart. I'm not just reading them to read. Uh, I'm just trying to be obedient. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The Bible says, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envy not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Do not behave itself unseemly, seek it not our own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believe all things, hope in all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Get down to verse 13, the Bible says, And now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Chapter 14, verse 1, the Bible says the first three words, follow after charity. Follow after charity. So, 
I want to start with the men. I think that would be the fairest thing to do uh, this morning. We may just get may just get to that one. I don't know how far we'll get. But start with the men in regard to the Bible asked us to love our wives like Christ loved the church. Well, how much does Christ love the church? He died for her. He gave. Nobody took his life. He gave his life. Okay. He gave. He laid his life down. And that's what it's all about, folks, is giving, giving, giving. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. God gave his son, and Jesus gave his life. <clears throat> you can measure a man by the way he treats his wife, okay? If you want to measure yourself, you measure yourself by the way you treat your wife. You don't measure yourself by how, how big a Bible you tote around, or what kind of haircut you wear, you wear a suit and wear wingtip shoes and drive a Lincoln, okay? You don't measure yourself like that. You measure yourself by how you treat your spouse. You measure yourself as a man by how you talk to your spouse. You measure yourself as a man by how you love your wife. The Bible says we're to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Uh, it's very clear with that. Very, very clear with that. It's very cut and dry. Um, Again, we're not measured by our strength, guys. We're not measured by our, our toughness. We're not measured by any of those things. The Bible teaches us that we are to love and to honor our wives because they are the weaker vessel. Okay? <clears throat> Can I ask you a question this morning? Would you consider your ways with me, men? Women, would you consider your ways with me this morning? Children, would you consider your ways with me? <clears throat> Some of us in public love our wives pretty good. Got everybody fooled. But it's in private. It's in private whether or not we're helping with the children we're helping with the house. See, these are all actions of love, okay? Um, helping with the cooking when we can. We're helping with the grocery shopping when we can, man. We try to listen. We try to take her on dates and make things special for her on anniversaries and on her birthday and on Valentine's. Y'all know that's important, man. Yeah. Women care about that stuff. Just because you don't care about it don't mean they don't care about it. <clears throat> but to love the wife is to help the wife and to give yourself and to sacrifice yourself for things you don't want to do. Helping with the children that you help make, they are your children too. Helping with the home, who you're that's supposed to be the head of. Helping with the cooking, grocery shopping, listening, try to listen. You know, women face a lot these days. A lot of them having to work, okay? They're, they're holding a job, and then they're coming home, and then they're, they're serving and laboring at the house, and they're trying to raise children, and they're trying to keep things uh, in order at the house. Listen, if you, if, if you don't have any help, it can, come to be, it can become such a burden on them, yeah. such a burden. Um, I know in a lot of your, your days, you know, the wife was would stay home and, and tend to the home and tend to the children and things like that. Well, a lot of, a lot of things have changed, okay? Uh, the woman wants to be appreciated. See, there's a difference between a man and a woman. A woman, a wife craves a, attention, okay? A wife craves to be loved, man. I'm going to teach you something right here. A wife craves to be loved. Well, a man's different. They don't really care about that. They just crave respect, okay? They just want to be respected. But a woman wants to be loved. They want to be told that. They want to be showed that. Um, but what are you doing in private, man? What are you, what are you doing in private that, that shows your love for your wife? Okay, I'm not talking about public. I'm talking about in private, behind closed doors. Um, 
We're to support her. We're to appreciate her. We're to forgive her when she makes mistakes. We're to talk to her. We're to make sacrifices for her. Amen? These are all actions of love, folks. And until we get these things right, and until we consider our ways, man, I wonder if we're truly pleasing the Lord. You know, we want to overlook these things that's important to God. They sometimes don't seem so important to us. Um, I wonder this morning, I'm just sharing with you what the Lord shared with me. Is that all right? Yeah. Is your love for your wife, is it conditional, men, or is it unconditional? And what I mean by that is this. Does she have to meet these certain standards and these certain requirements that, he, that, that you have set for her? Okay? And I understand there's standards in the home. I understand that. I do understand that. I've got standards. But what I'm asking you this, is your love for your wife, is it conditional or is it unconditional? Does she have to meet these certain standards and requirements that you have set for her before you can be good to her, before you can love her? <clears throat> conditional. Conditional always comes with an if, okay? If you do this, and if you have done that, and if this is done, and if you have done this for me. Conditional always comes with an if. I'm glad my God don't conditionally love me. Amen. Man, because I would be in a mess. Amen. But if you do this and if you do that, I'll show you love and I'll show you attention. Okay? If you'll do this for me and you'll do that for me. It always comes with a condition. It's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. If you do my laundry, if you'll pack my lunch, if you'll cook for me, if you'll clean my house, and this and that and this and that. Y'all know there are men like that. Okay? It's more of a, it's more of a dictatorship than a relationship. And uh, it, it's not right. <clears throat> but there's conditional and unconditional love in the marriage. An unconditional love loves in the good, but wait, it loves in the bad too. An unconditional love, an unconditional marriage loves through hard times, but wait, it loves in easy times too. It loves through the sickness, and it loves through health. Unconditional love loves the unlovable times and loves the lovable times. The unconditional love loves when, when, when times get hard and, and, and things are, are slim to none and poor and and then and, and unconditional love in the wealthy times when life is easy up on the mountaintops. But wait, unconditional love's down in the valley too. If that's not a picture of our Heavenly Father, man, I don't know what is. Amen. We're to be a reflection of our Heavenly Father. He showed us how to do it. I wrote down some things here. I hope I can make sense with it. Made perfectly sense to me. Uh, I want to just talk to you about biblical husbands, godly husbands. Okay, there's a difference between worldly man and a godly man. Yeah. Should be a difference. Uh, we shouldn't be talking about our wives and and, and groups of settings and and, and 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 downgrading them and talking about their this that and another. I know I have mixed children. I'm be careful what I say, but man, you are not be talking about some of that stuff. With the other men, uh, it's displeasing to the Lord, and it's not right. Oh, uh, but God's order for the home is is it's out of order in twenty twenty one. It's out of order. It's out of order. The man being head of the home is not being head of the home, and it's letting God down. But wait, it's letting the wife and it's letting the children down also. So our decisions not only affect us, but they affect everyone around us. Amen. Men, we are to blame for those things. I believe there's a shortage, a shortage, a shortage, a sore shortage of real godly men who love their wives, love their children. I believe there's a shortage like none other. And I believe that's the reason we're in a shape we're in this morning. Amen. Our churches are no stronger than they are. Our churches are no bigger than they are. Our churches... Listen, your church is only as good as the homes that make that thing up. Um, 
Nothing is going to change, man. Nothing is going to change in my life until I can follow these simple instructions. And that first instruction is to love my wife. Um, my prayers will be hindered. I do know that. I do know that blessings will not come because of that. Okay? Because of disobedience to Scripture. God's hands will stay tied until I obey His command as my duty. That's my duty is to love my wife. Amen. And uh, will he look over it? No, he ain't going to look over it. He's not going to dismiss it. Okay, He's just going to withhold blessings. Okay, Withhold things in my life that I could receive. Um, whether it be answered prayers, whether it be this, that, and another. Uh, but God's hands will stay tied, folks, until we obey Scripture. God's not going to bless our homes and our marriages until we love our wives. Man, our, our priority is to be a good Christian, to be a Christian dad and Christian, Christian husband, to lead right. But a good Christian, a good Christian man makes a good husband. Uh, good Christian equals a great dad. Good Christian man equals a great dad. Being filled is what I'm saying, being filled with the Spirit of God. The Bible says in Galatians that the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit, number one fruit of the Spirit is, is love. But being filled with the Spirit of God is love. Folks, our home need love. Amen. They need love like none other. There's enough hate out there. There's enough negativity. There's enough of that nonsense. Our home needs to be a place where our children and our wives can feel loved Amen. and appreciated. <clears throat> if I was to grade Stephen 1 through 10 in regards to being a godly husband... Grade being below average, average, and above average. Well, I would grade myself and measure myself by how well of a husband I am. I'll say this. You show me your grade. You show me your grade 1 through 10 as a biblical husband, and I'll show you your grade as a Christian. You know better of a Christian than you are a husband. <laughs> it's just that simple, guys. You show me your relationship with your wife, and I will show you your relationship with your Heavenly Father. Show me your love for your wife, and I will show you your love for your Heavenly Father. It, <clears throat> loving or not loving our wife, it affects our relationship with God, but it affects also our family and our church family. Everyone suffers for our disobedience. In regard to loving our wives. Men, you and I should do our sons a favor and be a leader worth following. Amen. We owe them that. We owe them to lead right. Men, we ought to do our daughters a favor and be that husband and be that dad that, that maybe she could look for in a man one day. Have we given them anything to look for in a man? How are you treating their mother? Do they know what to look for? Do they know what to say? No, I, my dad would never know. Do they know what to look for? Have we showed them? Do your sons and daughters a favor? I'm talking to myself. We have a huge responsibility, man. Huge responsibility. Shortage, shortage of men. And it's almost like, and I'm not trying to offend anybody by no means, but it's almost like the, the wife, the woman, is now the spiritual leader of the homes. I don't know the man's being pulled away. Pulled away, yielding to the flesh. Some of you would say I would never put a hand on a woman. And I'm glad you wouldn't. But what about verbal abuse, husbands? What about discrediting that weaker vessel? What about discrediting and belittling and cutting down? Words can hurt and scar in ways, in ways that you could physically, you could never hurt. 
If you find yourself not being able to say nothing nice, can I recommend maybe getting right with God? Because if you get right with God, you'll have plenty nice to say. Can I recommend, if you don't have nothing nice to say to your spouse, can I recommend Jesus to you? Jesus Christ will change you. He'll transform you. Jesus Christ is a life changer, by the way. My preacher told me one time, <laughs> he said, women are your wives turned on by what they hear. He said, but wait, they're turned off by what they hear too. And I got to thinking about that. You know, men's more turned on by what they see, okay? You know, they see something. And, but a woman is more, a woman's made different, men. A woman's turned on by what they hear. Uh but I thought that was pretty good. He told me that one time. So I will say this. Careful what you say and how you say it, guys. Careful what you say and how you say it. With that said, the Bible says in Ephesians that we are to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Now, that means the Bible says nothing about us men preaching to our wives. Okay? I understand there's leadership roles to play and there's things, uh, there's times. But I'm telling you something. Be careful, man. Be careful. The Bible says to love your wife. The Bible says nothing about preaching to your wife. To, have, to, get it, to get it just like you want it, to get it like you, 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 you use, that, you use that, that, that preaching and this, that, and another to get things like you want it. And it's coming out of the wrong motives of your heart. The Bible asks you to love your wife. So we are not to preach to her. We're not her preacher. We're not her pastor. We are not, the Bible says nowhere, nowhere that the husband is to judge his wife. Okay? But he did say to love her. The Bible says nowhere that we are to control or dictate our wives, men. But it did say to love her. We are not her father. We're not her dad. She married you to be her husband and to love her. We're not to judge her. We're not her God. We're her husband. Can I recommend that we try to out honor one another in our marriages? You say, well, she won't do this, so I'm going to stop doing this. She won't hold her part up, so I'm going to stop doing this part. That's no way to be. Do your part regardless. Try to out honor one another. Try it sometime. Try to out honor one another. We're good at it's easy to dishonor one another. That's the easy part. But it's the hard part to try to out honor, try to out serve, try to out help one another. Or to respect one another. Y'all know respect's still right. It's still right to teach your children respect. I will say this, man. I don't have nobody in mind today, I promise you. Just myself, basically. I may be preaching to myself. But it's easy to take advantage of a good woman. Because she's submit, a good godly woman. She's going to be submissive. She's going to be meek. She's going to be mild. She's going to do what she's told when she's told to do it. She's going to be there at your beck and call. Men, be careful taking advantage of a good, godly woman. Amen? I don't know who needs to hear that. <clears throat> oh, first of all, men, I believe the Bible teaches that we're to love, love our wives. We're to love our wives. You know, if we love someone, you'll pray for them. Men, can I ask you a question? Will you consider your ways this morning? Ladies, will you consider your ways? Do you pray for one another? I've told you before, a great prayer life consists in having a great prayer list. 
heard a preacher say one time, he had a list of things that he wrote down, 30-something things that he prayed for on behalf of his wife every morning, Brother Nick, every morning. Every morning he woke up because he knew her emotional state. He knew her weaknesses. He knew what she needed. He knew her health issues, and he had a list of things. Now, you may be able to do it mentally, but I would recommend writing some things down and start lifting those things up to the Lord and watch God change your wife. You say she's got an emotional issue. You say she suffers with depression. You say this, that, and another. Why are we not asking God? Why have you stopped asking God? If you love her, you'll pray for her, man. You'll pray for her. We pray for what we love. If it's yourself, you'll pray for yourself. If you, pray for, if you love your children, you'll pray for your children. How about your wife? Are you praying for your wife? A great prayer life consists in having a good prayer list. I truly believe that. But we're to love her, and if we love her, we will pray for her. If we love her, we'll give ourselves for her. It means we'll sacrifice things for her. We'll put her first. We'll keep her interests at heart. Sometimes we, we give to ourselves and give to ourselves, but true love is giving yourself for someone else. That's true love. No truer love than what Jesus gave to us. He gave himself. Nobody took his life. He gave his life. Sometimes we give all our attention and our energy and interest. I'm not saying you're a bad person. Sometimes we get caught up. Stop giving all our attention and our energy and our interest and our time. Sometimes we get caught up in our jobs and our friends and our hobbies. And <clears throat> Sometimes our wives are neglected, man. And the Bible asks us to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Sometimes we neglect our loved ones to please someone else. I've been guilty there. When you're filled with God, you can truly love, folks. When you're filled with the Spirit of God. You can truly submit, ladies, when you're filled with the Spirit of God. I'm telling you, it's going to be hard to submit to a man. I mean, who wants to submit to a man? They're dumb. They don't know nothing. But I'm going to tell you something. When you're filled with the Spirit of God, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, you can only do it through Christ, folks. <clears throat> but it's a privilege to give to your wife, man. It's a privilege. God will bless you mighty, mighty ways. He'll bless you mighty, mighty ways. <clears throat> Look, enjoy marriage. You don't have to endure marriage. God made marriage beautiful. Get to spend time with one another. Enjoy it. Don't just endure it. Enjoy it. Our relationship with our spouse is either growing or withering. Okay? It's no different than our relationship and our faith in Jesus Christ. My faith in God is either growing or withering, Miss Alice. It all depends on what Stephen does with it. The Bible says I'm to add to my faith. Okay? I'm to work at it. I'm to put forth an effort. Um, and it's no different than marriage. It's what you put into it, you'll get out of it. If I'll grow as a Christian, I've learned I'll grow as a husband. I've learned if I'll grow as a husband, I'll grow as a Christian. They go hand in hand. That's how God made it. God designed it. Men, sometimes we just crave respect. We want to be respected, but women, they crave to be loved, guys. If we'll fall in love with Jesus, you say, well, I'm a Jesus-loving man. You say, I'm a Jesus-loving man. Well, how much do you love your wife? You can't be a Jesus-loving man and mistreat your wife. You say, I'm a Jesus-loving man. How's your relationship with your spouse? Fall in love with Jesus. And see if you don't fall in love again with your spouse. Some of you need to fall back in love.
I'm going to tell you what gets in Stephen's way sometimes. is when I yield to the flesh. And I call, I named him some time back. And I may have read this to you before. But I named him one time. And I called him Mr. I. Okay? And Mr. I takes over, takes control, and makes a mess of things. <clears throat> You know, the Bible teaches in Exodus chapter 20, anything we put before the Lord is an idol. I wonder if Mr. I would be an idol. It's the first letter of the word. Idol. Idolatry. Your marriage will never be what it's supposed to be, folks. Until you turn, learn to tell yourself no and yield to the Spirit. You'll never love your wives and please the Lord like He's asked you to if you won't yield to the Spirit. When our idol is Mr. I, big I, we are committing idolatry. When you love you, you're living in, a, you're, you're living in idolatry. Mr. and Mrs. I sure makes a marriage hard. Sure makes a relationship hard. Mr. and Mrs. I is useless to the Lord and useless to lost souls. It is useless to children. It is useless to our spouse. Mr. I, Mrs. I's main concern is Mr. and Mrs. I. Nothing else matters at that moment. They have the mindset of every man for himself. Mr. and Mrs. I's favorite person is Mr. and Mrs. I. Favorite person to buy for, favorite person to talk about. You talk about yourself a lot. Mr. and Mrs. I's prayer life is really self-centered. Mr. and Mrs. I's selfish desires and have selfish ways. Mr. and Mrs. I looks to be served and not be a servant too. They look to be catered to and waited on. And I know a lot of you women enjoy waiting on your men. And hey, that's great. But men, don't, don't take them for, for advantage. I think Miss Marion even clips Brother Jimmy's toenails. <laughs> He's got it made in the shade. Oh, now nah, that's sweet. Oh. I don't know how you do it, sis. That's love right there, messing with somebody's toenail. Uh, Mr. I wants the biggest and the best, the most expensive, the shiniest, the fastest, never thinking of those without and that are in need. Folks, y'all know how many needs are around us? Mr. and Mrs. I, they aim to please Mr. and Mrs. I, no matter who gets hurt. It's called yielding to the flesh, folks. Mr. and Mrs. I are never grateful and thankful and appreciative. Very hard people to satisfy. Very hard people to satisfy. Mr. and Mrs. I is mostly impatient, never wanting to wait, because Mr. and Mrs. I, their, their, their schedule is a little more important than everybody else's. Some of you that have a problem with road rage, I know I'm meddling right here. Is your schedule more important than everybody else's? Everybody's got stuff to do and places to go, and children to drop off at school. It is aggravating when you have sightseers and uh, school traffic. That is a little aggravating. But Mr. and Mrs. I is never grateful and thankful and appreciative. Mr. and Mrs. I are never, mostly impatient, never wanting to wait because their schedule is more important than anyone else's. Mr. and Mrs. I don't admit very much of being wrong. It's called pride. Mr. and Mrs. I's paycheck is for Mr. and Mrs. I, and will even rob God from time to time of tithe and offering. Folks, we can't afford to rob the Lord. It all comes from Him. Mr. and Mrs. I's day is centered around Mr. and Mrs. I. There's not much time for the Lord. Boy, they, the day's too busy for stopping. 
read, read some Bible and, and talk to the Lord. Just too busy. Just too busy. Look, if you're too busy for that, if you're too busy for the Lord, you're too busy. Everybody hear me okay? If you're too busy for the Lord, you're too busy. Not much time to read God's Word. Y'all know your day goes so much better, you spend a little time with the Lord. I'm trying to hurry. I know I'm have y'all sitting a while, I'm sorry. But there there <clears throat> not have much time for your loved ones. Spend hey, spend time with your family. Spend time with your family. Love on them. Mr. and Mrs. I don't want God, don't want their wife, don't want their husband, don't want their children consuming their time and bothering them. Because it's all about them. Let me tell you something. If you have children and they still live at the house with you, they ain't grown up and gone yet, life's not about you no more. <laughs> God give you those little fellas, life ain't about you. And until they move on and gone, you focus on them. Put something in them. In John chapter 12, the Gospel of John chapter 12, verse 24, the Bible said, Jesus Christ said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Sometimes I think we're unfruitful because we're still fleshly too much alive. You can read that verse in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus to the disciples, If any man will come after me, let him to not deny himself. Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Mr. and Mrs. I's hobbies are top priority. Nothing else, no one else matters. Look, don't put... I know everybody needs time. Everybody needs time to think. Needs you to do your thing sometime. But it ain't every day. Okay? Don't put your family last all the time. Mr. and Mrs. I craves attention. If you ever know anybody that craves attention and, and craves to be in control and craves authority, beware, friend. Beware of them. Mr. and Mrs. I can't, can be your worst enemy. And you not even realize it. Yourself, you, can be your worst enemy. Will you consider your ways with me this morning? Will you be honest with yourself this morning? Mr. and Mrs. I miss out on a lot of blessings. I know I have. They miss out on a lot of blessings from the Lord. They miss out on a lot of sweet, sweet fellowship with Jesus Christ. Mr. and Mrs. I misses out on what God intended marriage to be like because of selfishness and pride. Misses out on what God intended raising children to be like because of selfishness and pride and yielding to the flesh. So many God-given privileges and experiences we miss because we yield to the flesh. Mr. and Mrs. I will rob all and leave you lonely and full of regrets. Take everything from you. And leave you with regrets. Mr. and Mrs. I hurts and hinders the work of the Lord. Hurts loved ones. Hurts those that need you the most. Folks, we've got to yield to the Spirit. Daily. Mr. and Mrs. I will get... In God's way, and get you out of God's will so quick. A Mr. and Mrs. I doesn't need a job at God's house, okay? If you constantly yielding to the to the flesh, you don't need to be at, you don't need to have a job at the Lord's house, okay? Because it'll always be about you, not about Him. We're here for Him, folks. Amen. We're not to make anything about us. When I become a Mr. I, I need to sit my tail down. When I become, if there's a teacher that comes a Mr. I, he, needs, he or she needs to sit down. Let somebody else do it. 
There's no room for Mr. and Mrs. I, especially at the Lord's house. The Lord's house. Because you only do what you can do. God's work will never be accomplished in our power. But he says we can do all things through him. So Sunday school teachers, song leaders, deacons, preachers, you name it. There's no room for Mr. and Mrs. I in the leader, leadership of the church. Mr. and Mrs. I is a glory robber. Mr. and Mrs. I is a good teacher robber. A good preacher robber. I know a lot of men who could preach to paint, slam off the walls. I could name you some men right now that could preach. I mean preach. You had to come in here. You had to come in here and repaint the walls tomorrow. I mean could preach. But they let that old pride, they let that old self get in the way. And I know I, ain't, I, ain't, I am not exempt of it. But Mr. and Mrs. I is a good husband, robber. Good daddy, robber. Good friend, robber. A good Christian, robber. I guess the saddest thing about living for Mr. and Mrs. I's, is we raise little Mr. and Mrs. I's. It's a continuous cycle. But you can break that cycle. Your grandchildren, you can do your best to anyway. You can do your part to break that cycle with your grandchildren. Show them what a real marriage is supposed to be like. What a real man is supposed to be like. How a real man treats his woman right. Look, you ain't a real man if, if you mistreat women. I'm just, I'm just, you're not a real man. <clears throat> The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. This is what happens when you yield to the Spirit of God. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. All these things are fruits. These are fruits that you can be growing on your tree, if you will. For your loved ones to pick off when they need it. Sis, would you come just play us something this morning? Maybe somebody needs to come to the altar. Maybe someone needs to bow their head at their seat. Maybe someone needs to ask their spouse for forgiveness. Maybe someone wants to rededicate their life this morning. Maybe someone wants to come and give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Would you come this morning? Would you do that? All you that are saved this morning, would y'all object of someone coming up this morning and giving their heart to Jesus Christ? Would any of you object? I didn't think so. If you're not saved this morning, would you come this morning? Would you do this for me this morning? Would you consider your ways this morning? We just covered one, one thought, one topic this morning. But would you consider your ways? If the Holy Spirit is asking, of you, asking you of you for something, would you consider your ways this morning? Whatever the Lord is trying to do in your heart, whatever the Lord is trying to do in your life, whatever the Lord is trying to do in your marriage, would you consider your ways this morning? As we stand and